Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a podcast with Nodrick and we're going to be talking about how the war in the Ukraine has affected her and her family. Um, I think for most of us, things like wars and natural disasters become statistics and Facebook posts and news articles and don't have a very personal element to it. So um, I know I'm curious about hearing more about how it's affected Nodrick personally, and I assume that other people in the audience will be as well. So that's why we're doing this podcast today. And uh, I just want to say right from the start, like Nodrick will get into um, the issues her family has had from the war, but she has created a Patreon and all donations will be going to help her family. Um, She'll be explaining more about the kind of help that that can lead to, but anybody who's feeling generous enough and is willing to donate, the Patreon link is in the description, and I just wanted to get that out of the way right to begin with. So I think that covers the technicalities and formalities of beginning. Um, yeah, where do you want to start, Noldrick, with how this has affected your life? I want to start from before the war. Uh, before the war, I also was a YouTuber. I used to um, do poetry readings, uh, going um, to the forest, posting nature videos and stuff like that. I never even thought of uh, monetizing my work. It all was uh, just to hang out with people, <laughs> mm-hmm. somehow spending uh, time together. Um, and if like, people uh, are curious, there's an older podcast me and Nodrick did back in the day. So if you want to compare her back then, um, you can yeah. yeah just search Nodrick on sorting myself out and you'll get our old podcast. We did a podcast uh, in September 2020. Um, yeah, like almost three years ago. And it was uh, Cordell, uh, you and yeah. I. And I'm I'm still uh, Cordell is my poetry kind of um, streaming partner. Like we we used to stream poetry together. Uh, we are still friends. We still very much hanging out today. We uh, did poetry together, but like on Discord, all this kind of light, nice um, um, content. It changed. Um, when I got the news about the war, uh, it uh, it started in February 2022. The first thing uh, I, I did, I tried to get my family out of there. And uh, they could not get out because they were under occupation immediately, because they were in south of Ukraine. And I felt very helpless. So I decided to stop playing video games and to at least start uh, videos talking about the war. So I did two videos talking about the war, just short videos without editing, just like posting raw footage. Um, I can also provide the links below to that. It's just first shock of the war. Uh, but then my mom saw it and asked me to stop doing that. Because she thought if I talk about the war, it will kind of make the war stronger. Like she said, like everybody talks about the war. Do what you normally do, forest videos. I said, no, I don't want to do forest videos. Mm. Uh, then I think uh, I also dived into propaganda because I was terrified for my family. I was uh, kind of reading news a lot, everything I could find. And so it made me like, I don't know, it made me uh, dehumanize uh, let's say Russians. I started mm-hmm. hating Russians, and uh, and that was absolutely against everything I was trying to preach. 
before with my poetry, which is like, we all people, let's understand each other. To me, mm -hmm. suddenly, it I was a part of the team. I was I was part of my tribe, and my tribe was invaded. So, uh, I caught myself, uh, just just like in my own head, saying, "Oh, those are not people," thinking like that. And I was at some point. Uh, I hated that. Like I, I started um, noticing uh, that I become worse than I used to be. I started uh, doing YouTube videos, not about the war as per my mom's request, but um, reading song lyrics uh, with uh, people I met on Discord. So we would read pick a song, read lyrics, and kind of do um, whatever we project, whatever the song lyrics uh, makes us think about. So I did like 119 of those with a lot of different people, uh, religious and atheists, even one satanist. <laughs> so, and it felt to me like, yes, we are all people. We are all humans. My best friend is Russian. It helped me to rebuild uh, seeing people, not their nations and what they are. Yeah. So with the Patreon, the war was going on a long time. And the Patreon started like two weeks ago, I think something like that. There was a dam in south of Ukraine and because of the war, the dam broke and the water flooded a lot of area in the south of Ukraine. And what happened was um, uh, parents of my sister's husband got stuck on a roof and uh, in, in a village in the site uh, occupied by Russians. Um, he could not help them. Uh, so their house got washed away. Uh, they kind of managed to get to the brick house of the neighbor. And then two more neighbors came in there. Everybody is like 75 um, or something like that in that range after 75, some animals. And uh, I started asking everybody for help to try to get them out or at least bring them food. And everybody told me, no, 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 we do not go to war zones and there are locals that they can help. Luckily, it happened. Uh, locals uh, started helping each other out. Those five people on this uh, flood area, the son arranged for the, his parents to be taken away, uh, like so, so somebody to come and get them, but they refused to leave. They said, we, we, we want to say like the five of us, we are family now, the people who spent a month in a flooded house. Mm -hmm. And so it took for him a little bit more time and a little bit of more uh, gathering uh, money to get them out there. And he got them out there. And <laughs> I kind of did not care about money at all, at all. Mm -hmm. But apparently helped to save somebody's lives. Um, my own childhood home is uh, destroyed, but my mom managed to get out. My grandma's house is destroyed, but uh, they managed, uh, my parents managed to take my grandmother. So 
they all live uh, now uh, in a rented house. I mean, hmm, money is, uh, it's enough to eat. So it's fine. But I know that when the war is over, I will need money to rebuild the uh, the houses that, that got destroyed. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I actually understood that oh yeah i need to start earning on what i do because i had been doing this for three years I've been doing youtube videos i did not monetize it i i was not i never had a patreon i never had anything that actually would give money and only like lately i got uh, the ability to monetize youtube because i got thousand subscribers so uh, some... youtube monetization doesn't produce much money I managed to cover uh, with super thanks that I got from two people. I managed to cover the cost that uh, was costing me to pay for Zoom. Okay, so that's yeah. it. I, I just barely covered Zoom. And before that, I paid for it myself. I just, yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I kind of never earned uh, on uh, on uh, youtube or on patreon not even on twitch like when i was streaming on twitch uh, there were two people or three people watching us and uh, they were poets so poets are poor souls <laughs> there are no rich poets not that i know of so we were just like gathering and talking and reading poetry and it doesn't pay yeah so that's why I started the Patreon. I don't know how to promote and uh, actually go around. I think I, I said, oh, yeah, I will thank you in the videos. <laughs> so, like, not experience. So yeah. if you guys can actually advise how to do all the promotion, I can also welcome the advice. Yeah, I was just going to say, I am not the right person to advise about marketing or promotion or making money either. So yeah. anyone watching that has any ideas of how Nodrick should promote the Patreon she's got going, um, yeah, comment in uh, the comments under this video or feel free to message Nodrick on our Discord. Just going to say, like, to throw out just something a little more positive. You did get your sister out of the Ukraine, though, right? And her kids? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so it was exactly a year ago. Um so at some point um, there was a heavy fighting in Nukahovka and my grandmother's house I think it was uh, on the 12th of 12 yeah like two days ago a year ago 12th of July a bomb uh, hit uh, some storage supply somewhere not far away from my grandma and the windows were blowing out and she was hiding in a cellar. And my parents went there by car through all the blog posts and managed to evacuate grandma. And my sister said, yeah, that's it. So she grabs the two children and uh, she takes uh, like whatever money she could find. And then the, the husband could not live with her because he would be considered a deserter. So he stayed. And so she, it took her four days, um, like <laughs> took her four days to get to Poland, uh, but she couldn't go through Ukraine. She was in the occupied territory. So what she did, she would have to pay um, like all the fucking savings to some bus driver, like with some other people. And he would like, take this long road through Crimea, then Russia, then the, some, some northern countries, uh, like to, to make, like, I think she went through three countries to get to Poland. I met her in Poland, I uh, made her documents, I, I gave her uh, a place to stay. And yeah, she uh, lives here for a year now with her children, without husband. And she, yeah, she's, um, She's safe. 
She says uh, her daughter is going to kindergarten. Her son is at, at, at the school, at the fourth grade. So they are learning well, Polish. It's, it's too bad that they don't have their father with them. But thank God that the kids are safe and out of the war zone. I, I feel so sorry for for the for the for her husband. Like that thing happened, and like he he for for like a year he doesn't see his children. I mean, he does see them through Zoom, through the calls, <coughs> but the, the, he did not uh, see them in real life and he cannot leave the country and then this thing for his parents that happened when his parents got trapped and and yeah and he 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 could not do anything for a month until the water subsided he could not save his own parents for a month and then when he finally was able to arrange the car they were like oh no no the five people it's five of us now we are <laughs> not leaving without the people on the rooftop we, who like they essentially saved each other's lives. I was like, yeah. And like, yeah, sorry. I was like, I'm so happy they finally, I... they finally evacuated. They are evacuated. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're not safe, they're in Kherson now. Uh, so it's it's a city in the, in the south of Ukraine. But, uh, and like uh, the, the shooting is still happening. I hope they can actually, they will all pack and go at least to the city my parents are. Uh, my sister, uh, they, like I live in Poland for a long time. It's not like my family did not have a chance to live in Poland and to, to leave Ukraine. They actually liked it there. Mm-hmm. They built their life there. Like she bought a house a year before the war. Um, she was not trying to change the countries. She was not trying to go and run away. And uh, like she actually loves her home. Mm -hmm. And uh, it it forced her and her children to to leave the place, to leave their father, the husband, <laughs> the father. <laughs> husband i'm sorry like my english is very um, kind of limited you're doing fine thank you yeah don't worry about that at all i'm just getting emotional when i yeah and don't worry about that either um it's perfectly understandable why you would get emotional about this and yeah, it's nothing compared to streams I've done where I'm breaking down and crying. So an emotional discussion fits in perfectly well, at sorting myself out. There are, there are four videos that I managed to sneak into my channel talking about the war. And uh, I cry in all of them. <laughs> so, the first one is pretty severe. It's like I, I just posted a month after the war in Ukraine started. And I was full on in, uh, in hatred. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, kind of talking about what, what happened to, to the poet like back in the day I was selfish no 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 it, it's just like let let all the all the attention go to poetry mm -hmm. yeah and how are you handling it now so like this I, I don't mean like, because we, we were discussing, I think like it's pretty obvious, your worries about the family um, and everything. But at the moment, what I mean is, this has caused a lot of change in you. Like not just your videos, but your focus, how you're thinking. How are you handling the way it's changed you personally? Like, do you miss the old? you and wish you could go back to that do you feel 
like this was something that meant to happen and the growth is good for you? Is it something in between, something completely different? I look 10 years older. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. That one I noticed. Video from three years ago versus now. I was like, oh my God, that's what war does to people. <laughs> um, and personally, I started uh, understanding, like for example, with the money thing, I always th thought that money is just, just a thing you need to buy food with. Now I understand that money is the thing you can save lives with. That, yeah, that it reminds me, reminds me of the Tom Waits lyric, um, money's just something you throw off the back of a train. Uh, I think both me and you really had that attitude towards money when we first met. Neither of us gave a fuck about it at all. Um, but yeah, no, it's, and it's one of those things where there's a truth on both sides. It's like on one hand, there is a truth too. Money's just something you throw off the back of a train. But the flip side to that coin is money is also how you fucking get things done in the Well, yeah, that, that throwing money from the back of the train. I have this attitude because money will not control me. I will not be a slave to material things. I will value people for uh, for who they are, but not for how much they own and stuff. Like that, that actually did not change. In a way, like all my friends, like I think I don't have not even one single rich friend like all my friends are like poor <laughs> and it's because conversations are much better well also there's more poor people in the world than rich people so the most people i know are poor too but that's yeah. just the reality of the world is most people are poor and interesting mm -hmm. that's uh, like i i i started um just going into their stories uh, more kind of started appreciating people more yeah like also the, the rich people rich people yeah. tend not to have the time to be talking to people for hours online yeah everybody got their priorities right <laughs> yeah I, I made it clear that uh, my priority will never be money it will always be people and now when I got this into this predicament, yeah, you, yeah, need, you need money actually to save people. people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it got me into like two weeks of depression or something. And I was like, oh, shit, I don't have enough to save those people. Yeah. I actually also lost friends who used to be my friends, but then uh, they... I could not pay for it, so. Mm -hmm. you know. Were they really friends there, right? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so, how's everyone in your family doing right now? Is everyone in a pretty safe area at the moment, or does anyone have a lot of shooting and stuff going on around them? A lot of uh, shooting going on at the south of Ukraine. A lot of shelling uh, and stuff. But, um, for example, my mom, my grandma, uh, my brother, my brother's wife, um, they are in Ukraine, but they're in semi-safe town. Okay. My sister's husband uh, is in the town where uh, war is fresh and ongoing. It's uh, just above the Crimea area. And um, I mean, it's, just, it's like really nice place to grow up in. Beautiful, really beautiful seaside, everything. And right now it's the most place uh, where there is shooting. Okay. And how are you handling that? Like um, that, I mean... 
nobody knows that you're not going to lose your loved ones, whether they're in a war zone or not. Like, it's always true that you could lose your family at any time, but the odds of you losing your family have been much higher since the war. Like, it's a much more real possibility that you might lose somebody. You've been really fortunate so far, but how are you handling that kind of worry um, about compare, them getting... Compared to what was in December uh, 20, 2022. Yeah. So in December... Uh, my mom was not yet evacuated, but she had her grandma with her and they lived in a cellar for a month because they were in a village that, that the actually active shooting was happening, like the army moved in uh, in the house next door, let's say. And there I was so scared, like for entire December, I had like the worst time during that war. Compared to that, right now I feel awesome because that was the hell. And I know who stood by my side. I know who helped and I know who didn't, <laughs> actually. So, yeah. <sighs> and right now it's, it's okay. It's okay. And like, I'm... I'm not as scared as I used to be. I think if I'm scared for a long time, you kind of get used to it. And right now, it's not as bad as it was in December. So I have this hell moment that I keep referring to and be grateful that it's not as bad right now as it used to be. I'm having to do a similar thing myself, like with my health and my recovery from COVID and that kind of stuff. It's Sometimes if I'm comparing myself to how I would feel before I'd ever gotten COVID, then I'm in really bad shape. But if instead I think back to the hell that I went through over the winter, this past winter, it's like, fuck, compared to that, I'm doing so much better. Compared to normal, I'm doing so shitty. And so it makes such a big difference what you compare the present moment to. Yeah. And oh. I haven't been following the news at all or anything like that. Is is there any hope of the fighting stopping in the Ukraine? Or does this look like it's just going to be going on for the foreseeable future? It will be going on for, for a long time. Every side, like, I do have a Russian friend and she kind of tells me what is happening on their side. And uh, they feel righteous. They feel like, like they explain themselves why it's needed to happen. Mm -hmm. And I guess the contracts had been made. So there is a lot of weapon to dispose, I guess. So it will, it will go on for some time. And are you finding it, because I'm sure like that comes along with a lot of helpless, like feeling of being helpless, because yeah, there's nothing you can do to stop the war. Do you think that instead that focus on making the Patreon and trying to do something productive, preparing for when the war's over and rebuilding, does that help you with that feeling of helplessness about not being able to stop the actual war? It, it 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 feels like I'm doing something positive because I'm doing Patreon with the hope that I can actually use it to rebuild things mm -hmm. in Ukraine. So it it kind of a place of hope for me. Like, Good. Um, I, I'm finding like oh yeah I'm building uh, I'm I'm building this thing that I will use when the war is over. That, that that will be helpful. I will build that amount, like a, a community of people 
And then when the war is, as soon as the war is over, I'll be like, okay, guys, now let's go with me rebuilding that thing. And I will like, gather people and we will all go to Ukraine and I will give them all houses, like not houses, place to sleep. <laughs> and we will all be rebuilding uh, the houses that broke. So I'm, I'm kind of have this in my head, how I'm focusing on how I will be rebuilding things. So and I hope this gets some traction because if anyone has been thinking about donating like to the um to help with what's been going on in the Ukraine, it's like so many charities use up a good percentage of their donations on the running the charity itself. So if someone wants to donate some money and be able to have the bit like a big impact. Because I know, like, for you, you're not using any of the donations for anything else. You're not, you know, paying um, employees to run this. So this is an opportunity if anyone wants to donate that all the money that goes to the Patreon for this, Nodrick's going to use that directly to help people in the Ukraine. Yeah. I can, like... If, if people, after the war is over, people want to even come and see for themselves, make a movie about it, I will be there rebuilding. Come and help. It's, it's like, yeah, donations will, will be gathered. I will, I will keep it for the precise purpose. Like even the channel that I'm running now, now I'm like, yeah. I, I first wrote it in a in um in the comments that all the money that I do I give to my sister because she does live in Poland for a year and I feel uncomfortable asking like mm -hmm. I, I always was paying for my things I never mm -hmm. asked people for money I made it sure that I will not be corrupted so it was hard for me to get this relationship with money going where I was like, yes, but you need to because you want to rebuild. If you don't rebuild, like if you don't have money to rebuild, how can you rebuild? And so it 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 almost it felt like uh, strangling who I am asking for. Yeah, yeah, I can totally understand that because I went through a phase years and years ago of seeing money as the root of all evil and trying to completely deprogram myself from the desire for money whatsoever. So I went through a phase like that and had difficulty shifting my focus to realize, like even just being on disability, like, cause when I wanted to deprogram myself from it, I, at one point it was my father cashed my checks for me and just, paid my bills and dropped off my groceries and so i was literally not thinking about money for years and even just to switch over to paying my own bills and just thinking about money and the money i spend was a difficult transition for me but yeah i'm also and i'm at a place where i realize that that's too far of a polarity to the other end like there's the truth to money being the root of evil and all that but then again, it's also how things function in the world. Um, so, yeah, I can totally understand what you mean about the thought of trying to ask for money, catching in your throat and not feeling right. Yeah. Yeah, it's like so. That, that's that's the, the things we have to do. On the other hand, though, there are people out there that their love language is gifts. Like, and it's not the way you and me are wired, but there are some people who have money and that's their love language with the world. Like to them, donating to something is them showing their love to the world, where is for you and me, it's us giving our time and ourselves to people that makes us feel like we're loving the world. There's other people's that money is their love language. And so anyone who's watching this and money's your love language and you want to spread some love into the world um <laughs> donate to nodrick's patreon thank you and it will be appreciated uh, uh, yeah thank you thank you i i also will uh value advisors 
any other form of help uh, like it doesn't have to be money if you can't afford it um just just know that in the future i will i will be gathering a team of builders or people who want to help so just keep or if someone's mind. watching this and wants to help and doesn't have any money uh do whatever kind of sharing on social media like pass this podcast around um yeah, or even just commenting and liking this video will help it push out into the algorithm more. So, yeah, any small thing is appreciated. Yeah, thank you. We can wrap up here then. And if all those things that you'd had in your head to say before come back to you, we can do a follow-up podcast another time. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Margaret. I, I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, you're very welcome. And yeah, I hope this brings some attention to it and yeah, has some effect. Um, 